You know, every now and then, it's always great to talk to buddies, always great to talk to friends, people that you know, people that are doing big things, people who've done big things, okay? And as I sit here today thinking about who I'm about to have our next conversation with, I'm thinking about a brother that used to star in the show Soul Food. I'm thinking about a brother that's been doing a lot of big things. I don't like him particularly. I love him, but I don't like him. Here's why I don't like him. Because no matter how much shape I get in, no matter how good I feel, no matter how good I think I look, every time I get next to this next brother, it reminds me of how ugly I am. It truly, truly is. I have no shot. I'm talking about you can put a thousand women in front of me, 10,000 women in front of me, a million women in front of me. Not one, not one would pick me over the man I'm about to talk to next. He's a heartthrob, but he won't admit it because he's such a happily married man. He's a damn good actor, hell of an athlete, and an even better person. My brother, the one and only Boris Kojo, up next in the house with yours truly, Stephen A. Back with more in a minute. Oh, my Lord. Have you been watching the NBA playoffs? Because you know I have. And yes, they've been fantastic. Make no mistake about it. But do you know what else makes watching them even more exciting, even more scintillating? Prize picks, of course. That's what the hell I'm talking about. In case you didn't know, you didn't know this. Prize picks is a daily fantasy app where you can select two or more of your favorite players and then pick more or less on their projected stats for the game. So with a big event happening each and every single night, Prize Picks is here to help you cash in on all that real-time action. I make my picks every night in less than 60 seconds. Then I sit back, I watch, and I wait for the cash. But Prize Picks doesn't stop at the NBA. Oh, no. You can choose from a myriad of sports, the WNBA, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League, even MMA, and everything in between. And get this, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. You heard me right. Go to prizepicks.com and use code SAS. That's my initials, of course, for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's SAS when you go to prizepicks.com and use the promo code. Pick more, pick less. It's really, really that easy. My next guest is an accomplished actor, director, and a friend known for films like Brown Sugar, Soul Food, and more. He's currently starring on ABC's hit drama, Station 19. This is my brother right here, the one and only Boris Kojo, is in the house with yours truly. What's up, big time? How you doing, man? How's everything? I'm great. Blessed to be on with you. Thanks for having me, brother. How are you? Well, l listen, I believe in my safety and my good health, and I know the ladies don't play. So the first order of business, I have to take, I, before I do anything else, the wife, Nicole Ari Parker, where is she? How is she doing? Because if I didn't ask about her before I started the interview, I'd be in trouble. We all know. We all You're know she'd get on me right. about that. She's doing well, thank you. And she sends her love right. as well because she loves you, you as well. Same and uh, I love it. She's death, yes. currently at the Drama League Awards in New York City. She was nominated for a Drama League Award this year, so much wow. uh, deservingly so. And she's at the award show right now as we speak. Oh, my goodness. Well, listen, man, I, if I get back in New York, I'm going to try to catch the both of y'all because we know where you be going. The minute you finish working in L.A., you're going to fly to New York. You're going to be with the wife. We know how you yeah. roll. You, you're going to be with the wife. Make no mistake about that. You know, you and, already and listen, know. I, 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 you already know. I already know. I already know. Now, 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 needless to say, I've been feeling good. I'm feeling a lot better. Lost a lot of weight, taking care of myself. And I always think I look good until I get around you. And then I remind, I'm reminded of how ugly I am compared to most people. You know what I'm saying? So that, that, that's my life being around Boris Kojo. You no, understand what I'm saying? That's why you listen, see me so infrequently. Two things. Two things. <laughs> Number one, I'm so proud of you that you have chosen Thank your you, health over yeah. everything else, um, which is the most important thing you can do. And number two, yeah. you just got to let go of that hair. Uh, why? Why would you say that, man? I just pack it down, man. I go, listen, I ain't got a big square head like you. It would look better on me. I got a peanut head with a schnoz for a nose and a noggin in the back. I go bald, Boris. I got no chance, man. My girl will dump me tomorrow. It'll be that bad. Come on, man. No, she I won't. can't do that. No, she won't. I, 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 it, I don't know. Great, I don't know. It is a great, it is a great feeling of liberation when you do that. Right? When I started receding and my hairline went down to my ears, I said, look. 
it's right. not worth it. And once you do it, the relief, the freedom, uh, trust me, it, it'd be worth it. See, there you go again. You're trying to convince me to go bald over the national. You're something else, man. You're unbelievable. Let me get to you before, about some basketball before I get into your career and what you've been doing and what you're going to continue to be doing. Um, you watch these playoffs. What's been the most pleasant surprise for you watching these NBA playoffs? Two things. Um, number one, I love the parody that has developed okay. over the past three years. I love that we can actually watch uh playoff series not really knowing the outcome um i think that's really been good for the game and number two um the changing of the guard you know i think that uh there's some young superstars that are emerging like anthony Ed edwards for instance that have really uh invigorated the game and has made watching uh, uh really really fun even though i must say uh you know, what LeBron has done in the past 20 years is nothing short of astonishing. And to still be uh, producing these kind of numbers at his age is absolutely mind boggling. So uh, I hope that he's going to play another two, three, four, five years because uh, he's the greatest of all time. And, and I would I would really miss him. But, um, yes, I love that there's some stars popping up. You know, Wemba Yama, I think, has, has exceeded our expectation, uh, expectations. Uh, it's also a great sign of uh, international players uh, coming into the league at, a, at, at the highest numbers in history. And I think that trend is going um, to get even um, uh, more prevalent. Let me transition to Captain Robert Sullivan, which is you, Station 19, of course. Uh, the show coming to an end after about seven seasons. How are you feeling about it and the success you've enjoyed with the show? You know, I feel great. I mean, these past seven years was uh, was an amazing chapter in my life. Uh, I made a, a family um, on the show. Uh, this is yep. a group of people that I love dearly. And to have been blessed to work with them for so long is, is, is truly amazing. Uh, I started directing on this show, uh, which is also yeah. um, another chapter in my career, which I'm going to explore further. So uh, mm. I'm happy. This was a great time. And uh, I made some great friends. And now it's time to spread my wings and do other things. It's almost like, you know, now I'm a free agent. So I can explore yeah. other but options and have conversations about doing many different things. I can start doing movies again, which I wasn't able to do mm -hmm. for almost a decade. Being Why not? Down here. Why not? But, um, oh. so, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, um, great uh, opportunity that's going to emerge and I'm looking forward to it. Why weren't you able to do, you know, to venture out and do more over the last decade? Why? Because of the acting that prohibited you or restricted you from being able to, to direct and do other things? Not not contractually, but when you do a network series, that occupies about 10 months out of your year. Um, mm. So so when you're done shooting one uh, one season, you're exhausted. And uh, the last thing wow. you want to do is is travel to whatever Argentina or Spain or Japan or Australia to shoot a movie when uh, you can spend, you know, the next six weeks. Uh, with the family and just sort of recuperating and relaxing. And um, mm. so that's what I did. And now that the gotcha. show is over, I can, I can uh, you know, explore some of those other options as well. What is it about directing that serves like a magnet for so many actors? We see actors and then all of a sudden we're hearing, you know, you, it, it, of course, you you know, you might executive produce, you might produce something, but you're seeing more and more wanting to get into directing. What is it about directing that appears to be this magnetizing element that people gravitate towards in your profession? I think for some of us, it's a, it's a sort of organic evolution, right? Um, a progression of growth, because as an actor, you come to set and you do your thing and you go home and you really have no input. Um, of of what the the final product is going to look like as a director mm. you have the ability to pull all of these different resources together whether it's the visual aspect or the acting aspect or 
um, you know, uh, um, the sets and, and, and the, the visual narrative, the tonality, sound, uh, uh, scoring, music, and you can really craft your narrative. You can really display uh, your perspective of the, of the topic that you are, um, the, the story that you're telling. So, so you're more in control of the final outcome and uh, it is creatively, I think, more of, a, um, of, a, of an experience that gives you fulfillment rather than just contributing that small piece um, to, to the story. So to me, it was a, it was a, a next step um, I've been mm -hmm. trained for this for 25 years, being in front of the camera. I've always paid attention. I spent a lot of time with DPs and producers on, on set and made sure that I learned everybody's trade. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I directed my first movie three years ago, and now uh, getting into television as well is uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's been a really, really great experience, and I hope I'll get to do it many, many more times. How receptive do you believe Hollywood is going to be the people who are not necessarily white being directors? And most importantly, um, not only how receptive are they going to be to it, what kind of opportunities do you believe is out there for an abundance of us folks from, 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 from the black community to really have an opportunity to engage in such ventures as being a director? You know, I, I stopped worrying about them uh, a long time ago. And I focus on mm. things that I can control. And you're absolutely right. Uh, the industry is, is definitely diversity challenged still to this day, especially behind the camera. Um, so I do my part in trying to uh, push for representation and inclusion. And one way to do that is through storytelling, right? Because when you control the narrative, you control, pers uh, you control perception. And perception mm -hmm. is what changes um, uh, impact and what changes uh, dynamics, power dynamics, uh, because people get to see the other side. And um, this is our strength. You know, we've always um, been trailblazers and leaders in, in culture. And we've set standards and set the tone across sectors, whether it's music, uh, you know, entertainment, visual entertainment, sports, um, uh, social justice, and we continue to lead. And I think that uh, as we um, enter this new age of even AI technology, um, yes, there is dangers and threats, but there's also great opportunity in that and um, great opportunity in representation and inclusion. So, um, all you can do is set one foot in front of the next and uh, have a positive attitude, work as hard as you can and um, try to work together, create synergies and partnerships and make sure that we uh, help each other. When we help each other, we help ourselves. And I think that's one right. thing that has gotten lost a little bit uh, in this sort of crabs in a barrel mentality that has, um, uh, that was the result of the divide and conquer um, the strategy that's been sort of, that we've been sort of subjected to for a long time. Um, we have a lot of leverage when we work together and when we put our heads mm -hmm. together and we, um, we create synergies. So let's focus on that. On a personal level, contrary to popular belief, you are not 29 going on 30. You, because you look it, damn it. Okay, you're in your fifties. All right, you're in your fifties, Boris. Okay, so 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 uh, you and your wife, uh, the lovely Nicole Larry Parker, y'all look at what they call empty nesters now. The kids are grown, kids are going away. I mean, it, it, you're an empty nester now. How, how you liking that, my brother? I mean, is it difficult? Is it lovely? What what is it? Man, I love it, and uh, we're we're almost there. Nicholas has another year, and then he's gone as well. Sophie's at Howard, uh, loving it. Um, it's great because it comes with a lot of freedom. Now we can, you know, travel again uh, at a drop of a hat. We can just go. Um, we can have our adventures worldwide and, and go do things that we haven't been able to do. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it, right? We, we love spending time together and, and uh, no matter what we do. Um, and, um, but time does fly. So I look back mm -hmm. and, and, you know, 10 years ago when they were tiny little people and now they're 
they're off spreading their wings, doing their thing. Nicholas is going to go to Europe again and play for the national team um, in the right. month of July, and and he's doing his thing, and I'm proud of him. Sophie's doing her thing. So, I guess that's what we do, right? We um, we we raise humans, and then at some point, those yeah. humans uh, do their own thing. I'm I'm proud, and I'm I'm actually excited witnessing their growth and 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 what they're going to do in their lives. Uh, but I'm definitely not going to miss uh, some of the things uh, that we have to do as parents every <laughs> single day. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear with that. What, 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 what's Sophie, what, what, is, what is she aspiring to do? What is she aspiring to do? She says she goes, Sophie, she's going to Howard. What, what, what does she want to do? Sophie's, yes. Sophie's helping us a lot. She's into business, international business. And um, okay. we just launched a, a, a program with, our, with the Kojo Family Foundation called Love All Scholarship, which is um, mm. a, a program where we're supporting black high school, black and brown high school students who have aspirations in the classroom as well as on the tennis court. Me being a former tennis player, uh, that's mm. sort of been my Pro life. tennis players, yeah. We are, we are supporting those uh, students by um, giving them scholarships to the biggest uh, uh, tennis academies around the world, like the Mora Tudela Academy in the south of France. We just had a girl graduate from there and go to, to a D1 school here in the States. Um, so Sophie's helping us with that, right? Um, continuing to support our young black and brown students and um, giving them opportunities for higher education and um, and finding their purpose. So if you want more information and, and, about that, go to kojofoundation.org or if you want to apply for one of the scholarships too. Kojofoundation.org. And you talked about going, you, you, go to, you go to Ghana a lot, do you not? Have you talked to me about that before? Yes. So I actually invited so, you like three times already. You yes, you did. Come yet. I'm coming. I'm coming, okay. man. I ain't left the country okay. in a while. I haven't left the country in a while. Yeah. It ain't like I went you somewhere else. I haven't yet. left yet. Please, Full Circle Africa is a is a is a company we started six years ago, building a bridge between the diaspora and the continent. And what we do is we bring together leaders in business, entertainment, and sports to have solution based dialogue around changing the mindset from charity and aid dependency to economic development opportunities and investing in the continent and on the continent. And uh, Africa is, I call it, it's in a pre IPO phase. It, it's, it's got huge potential. It's, it's a huge a unified trade union uh, of $9 trillion uh, across sectors. It's got the youngest population in the world at 19 years old, and it's got the highest connectivity of any other continent, twice as many devices as here or in Europe, uh, which means that's how you consume content. That's how you communicate. That's how you bank. Um, so again, it's got huge, huge potential, uh, great opportunities over there. And we're trying to build a bridge between the diaspora and the continent to do so. Yeah. Got you. Before I let you get on out of here, your son, Nicholas, can't forget talking about him for a quick second. The brother can ball from what I'm told. Brother can ball. Young brother can ball. Can, can you speak to your son and his skill set on the basketball court and what we can expect from him? Can you tell me about that, please? Without putting any pressure on him, he is, he's phenomenal. He actually transitioned from tennis to basketball only three and a half years ago. So he was at an academy wow. in Europe playing tennis, and then he decided he wanted to play ball. Wow. That was when he was 14. And now he plays on the German mm. national team, uh, basketball. He's a great hooper. He's long. He's got a, a six, nine wingspan. He's six, six. He's still growing. He can shoot lights out and he's, he plays at SCA, uh, SoCal Academy, Julius V. And he's got a great, uh, AAU, um, uh, season going on right now. Lots of schools are looking at him. And what I love mm. about him, he brings the, the, the European. Uh, mentality, the IQ, uh, he really knows how to play ball, right? Sometimes when you look at, for instance, the, the junior national teams overseas, they're so structured and disciplined. And then you look at the AU ball here, which is sometimes, um, <laughs> sometimes quite chaotic um, because the kids here, they don't even play together, right? They don't, they don't play they don't right. practice during the week. And then on the weekend, they have six games together. So it, 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 they can't play together right they're supposed to how they're supposed to in europe they practice every single day and then they have a game on the weekend so 
that shows in how those games are played. And for Nicholas, it's great because he has both of both the best of both worlds. He's got that mm -hmm. um, European mentality, but he also has the skills and the physicality that that you can see here when you watch the highest. Uh, you know, he played at OTE. And when you watch those right. kids play AAU, it's, it's tremendous how how mm. physically gifted and and athletic they are. So he's got mm. he's got both both things in his game. Back to you. Before I let you get on out of here, you were a tennis player. Obviously, you became an actor. Have you gotten into this pickleball craze at all? Come on, man! Stop it. I I'm asking. I'm asking. Yeah. I'm asking. Can, can look, I ask? Look, look. I, I got to admit, I haven't tried it. A lot of my friends are trying to get me on the pickleball court. But, you know, we, we live here uh, on the beach, and all I hear in the mornings on the weekends is clink, clank, 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 clank. The, the <laughs> noise is driving me crazy. The plastic ball. I mean, right. you got to do something about this ball because it's, it's, it's the most annoying sound I've heard in, in, in years. But uh, they're all trying to get me to play. So, you know, as I'm getting older, like you said, I'm I'm 28. So when I'm turning 29, maybe That's I'm right. going to start playing That's football. Right. Man, man. Well, I know you're looking. I'll give you credit <laughs> for that. I know that much, man. Man, I appreciate you so much, man. It's always good seeing you. Always good talking to you. You know, I got a lot of love for you and your wonderful wife. Please give her my best. All the best to you. And you'll see me soon, my man. You'll see me soon. I can't wait, dude. Uh, pleasure again. Thanks so much. Love you back. And I uh, hope to see you in New York. Thanks again to my brother, the one and only Boris Kojo. Always appreciate talking to my man. The best of luck with him. Station 19 and a whole bunch of other stuff going on in his illustrious career. Major, major props to him. Always rooting for my brother. Up next, Joe Coles. It's Stephen A. in the house, in studio. I'm always here to serve y'all. I haven't spoken to y'all in a while. I'm going to change that right now. Your Coles. Up next, right here. Don't go away. Stephen A. Smith Show in the house. Back with more in a minute. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith's show right here over the digital airways of YouTube. Thanks again to my man, Boris Kojo, for being on the show with yours truly. That's my brother. I've known him for years, known as lo wonderful, lovely wife, Nicole Ari Parker, one of the greatest, greatest women I've ever known. She's, she's a spectacular human being. Nothing but the best of them and their wonderful, wonderful family. Let me get to the call before I get on out of here, please. Let's go to Tyler in Albany. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Tyler? How are you? Good, good afternoon, Stephen A. I'm doing pretty well myself. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Talk to me. What's up? All right. So i not going to lie. I stole this from Unk and Ocho, but they did a draft of their top five soul food picks. I'm very curious as to what yours would be if you were sitting down. Whole, excuse me. For soul food. Hit me. Soul food? Well, obviously, we're going to go with the fried chicken. I can't deny that don't like feeding in the stereotypes, but I'd be damned if I ain't guilty of it. I love my fried chicken wings. Number one, um, some macaroni and cheese, no doubt. Um, some, you know, I, I gotta go with the candy yams. I like that. Um, definitely so. Um, some collard greens, can't ignore that. That's, that, 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 that's huge. You want some people, you listen, that's what we do. We talk about soul food, that's what we think about. And the cornbread. But every cornbread don't taste great. Some are sweeter than other. Some's a little bit too much butter. Some's a little bit too little. It's got to be just right. And it's got to be sweet enough. Not too sweet, but it can't be just plain and bland, feeling like it's just damn near foam in your mouth. You understand? It's got to be nicely, perfectly baked and the right kind of sweetness attached to it. My mama, my mama made some great cornbread. My mama, my Aunt Flo, the greatest cook I've ever known in my life. She was my mama's sister, my Aunt Flo from St. Thomas Virgin Islands. I mean, it was no... Uh. This woman was such a phenomenal cook. People used to roll. Yes, Galen, better than my sister Carmen. You have folks in St. Thomas. She made these, like, remember that Italian ices and stuff like that? She used to make the ices in the cup and stuff like that, smoothies and all this other stuff. You had people who would come over to the neighborhood to pay her. They didn't even go to the stores. They come pay her because that's how much a phenomenal cook. Everything she touched was magnificent in that kitchen. My aunt Flo was the real deal. Love you, miss you dearly. You know that. And I, I, I barely go to St. Thomas now because she passed away. Why? <laughs> With that cooking gone, I can wave at my relatives, the rest of them. I miss aunt Flo. I really, really do. Thanks a lot, Tyler. I hope that answers your question, bro. I hope that answers your question. 
Let's go to Kyle in Charlotte, North Carolina. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? What's up, Kyle? Hi, sir. How are you? I'm good. Talk to me. A couple of months ago, I called you and uh, I asked for some advice. I, I said I was a bit lost. Uh, you know, I go to Chapel Hill. You gave me some great advice that I took to heart and I really appreciate it. And um, OK, now, what was the advice? though? You got to remind me of the advice. What advice did I give you? You said that, you know, it's not always a straight path. And you told me about, uh, you know, your your path through Winston-Salem. And you didn't think that you were going to go through that way. And and so I took that to heart. I, I really appreciated it. My pleasure. Um, and, you know, you said call in and give give an update every now and then. Please. And so I have an update as well as a question. Give it to me. Um, I, I have an interview coming up in a couple of days with an outreach program. It, it's uh, helping organize and mobilize voters for uh, the November election. And okay. um, I'm, I'm really excited for the opportunity to be able to uh, at least just be interviewed. So my question is, what is now your advice for having a great interview? Well, first of all, you, you have to be passionate and you have to make sure that you're conveying to a prospective employer that passion, energy, drive is not something they're going to need to be concerned about because you have all of that. Knowledge and competency is right up there as well, okay? But an employer always wants a little wiggle room to t be able to teach you and mold you in a certain way. No matter what they say, they don't be wanting a finished product all the time because a finished product is not somebody that believes they need to be, you know, taught anything. They believe they have all the answers, and that can be very, very irritate, irritating to certain bosses. So you have to be mindful of that. So you got to have the knowledge and the competency, and it has to be at a high level, but not enough to the point where you're rigid and averse to listening to other people, particularly people in the positions of authority. Outside of that is the fervor, the desires, the passion to go out there and do it. And you want to be a self-starter. You don't want to be somebody that's seen as punching a clock, like you counting the hours down before you can get off of work, or you're lamenting when you're going to arrive at work. You are up and ready to go. And when they look at you, I don't give a damn what time of day or night it is. When they look at you, they know you ready. And you energized. And you ready to do this. Especially when it comes to something that's important is galvanizing voters for an election. Those things are very, very important because we're talking about life-altering decisions that are being made in the world of politics and beyond. You got to pay attention to that and you got to make sure that you show that there's a level of passion that cannot be questioned and there's a level of commitment that cannot be denied. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. I appreciate the call, buddy. Thank you so much and good luck. Okay, stay in touch. Miguel in California, you're live with Stephen A. What's up, Miguel? How are you going? I'm good. Talk to me. Uh, I was just wondering, who do you got winning a championship first between the Dallas Cowboys or the New York Knicks? Wow. Um, I would say the Knicks, believe it or not. I would not have said that months ago, but after watching the New York Knicks grind and tough it out the way that they did, and it's taken injuries to six different players in order to derail their title hopes and aspirations, I'd have to give them the edge. I haven't seen the Dallas Cowboys do anything this offseason that would give me an indication they're going to win the NFC East over the Philadelphia Eagles, that they would beat the Detroit Lions, that they would beat the San Francisco 49ers, or anybody like that. I haven't seen that from the Dallas Cowboys. Matter of fact, this saddle would happen to pay Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and Micah Parsons. Micah bosses deserve his money. He's that dude. He's that brother. But I'm really, really not sold too much, too heavily on the Dallas Cowboys and their title aspirations because I haven't seen them really make that kind of noise. I hope that answers your question. Zephyr in Tucson, Arizona. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hi, Stephen. First, I want to thank you for putting out so much content for us during the NBA season. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, of course. And my question here. If the NBA introduced an Offensive Player of the Year award, who would you be giving it to this season? An Offensive Player of the Year award? Yes, sir. <sighs> wow. Um, I'm going to tell you my MVP was Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, scored over 30 in 50-plus games. Average 30 for the season was the third leading scorer. I know Luka Doncic uh, obviously deserves strong consideration because he averaged damn near triple-double. They're in the Western Conference Finals. I know that Giannis Antetokounmpo would have deserved consideration. He was the league's second leading scorer before going down due to injury. But the name that I come up with is Shea Gilgis Alexander, second youngest team in the NBA, get to the conference semifinals to within the, you know, game six, average 30 in the playoffs, average 30 in the regular season, be considering the youth on that squad and the model of consistency that
that he was, I would tell you it's, it's him. I will tell you if you took into account box office appeal, however, the name would be Anthony Edwards, the brother's box office. You walk through the turnstiles to watch that brother. I don't know if you do that for Shea Gilgis Alexander. So that might be a demerit, a minus against him, but I'm still going to give it to him because I thought he should have been the league MVP instead of Jokic. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Last call, Stephen in Wayne, New Jersey. Beautiful name. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen A., how you doing today? I'm good. What's up? So this question, this is coming from a Heat fan, right? But it's come from a guy that just enjoys hoops and good discussion. Okay. So if, if Anthony Edwards can somehow win a championship this year, yeah. can, we ha- can we start having talks about possibly, when it's all said and done, maybe he surpasses Dwayne Wade all time? He would have a title of 22. Whoa, stop, 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 out. stop, stop, yeah, yeah, yeah. stop. <laughs> now, nah, that's blasphemous. That's blasphemous. I mean, you do know that D-Wade has three rings, right? Three. You do know that D-Wade played and participated in an era where the brand of basketball was a bit tougher than it is today. You do know that when D-Wade retired, We definitively said two people, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, were the only two guards definitively better than D-Wade in NBA history. You're being a bit blasphemous now. Now, if, if Anthony Edwards, I mean, can he at least win two titles before you do that? Can he do that? He ain't even been to an NBA Finals yet. And you're saying if he wins the title this year, can we say, he? can we put him above D-Wade? I mean, damn. That's all it takes for you to just throw three way to side like that? No, no. So I think I may have worded it wrong. So I'm saying if he does win the title, can he potentially down the line maybe pass him all time? Not if he wins the title now, but like when it's all said and done, if he can get a title no, this year. No, no, no. Year. He got a chance. He got a chance. What if he wins multiple titles? Because as great as D Wade was, yeah. as great as D Wade was, he didn't have that kind of athleticism. But D-Wade had everything else. D-Wade had that heart. D-Wade had that clutch gene. D-Wade had that perimeter game. D-Wade could finish at the basket. D-Wade was a leader. Hell, D-Wade was a recruiter. And, by the way, not only was he box office, he was Madison Avenue. D-Wade is D-Wade, baby. Come on now. Let's be respectful. Let's be respectful. Appreciate the call. Thank you so much, man. Hope you enjoy your day. All the best to you. Got to get on out of here. Once again, thanks to the one and only Boris Kojo for coming on the show and talking with us. I got to get on out of here, but I'll be back in a couple of days or so, if not sooner. Stick around. It is the Stephen A. Smith Show over the digital airwaves of YouTube. Holler at your boy as these NBA playoffs continue to rev up.